Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Kyle Report. Wherever you get your podcast, you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, AMP, IRE. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And don't forget, you can always read my work on ESPN.com. Today, I'm joined by former NFL, longtime former NFL coach, Marty Morningway, because I wanted to get an outside perspective on Sam Howell. I want someone from a national perspective, someone who's been around the game. This guy's been around with a number of teams, a number of young quarterbacks from Brett Favre. He was around Steve Young, Jeff Garcia when he was young, Geno Smith, um, all sorts of guys, you know, and I'm, I'm leaving guys out because he's coached uh, Lamar Jackson, for goodness sake. So he's coached a lot of guys. He likes what he's seen from Sam Howell. So wanted to bring him on to talk about him. He writes for, He's, you know, again, former head coach, former offensive coordinator. So, you know, he's done a lot of things. And I think I want, that's, I said, he brings good perspective. He also writes for something called the 33rd team. If you haven't checked him out, there's a lot of former executives, um, coaches who write for them and provide insight. And so I think it's a worthwhile read wherever you can get it. So that's why I want to bring him on. But before I get to my conversation with Marty, just wanted to go over a couple things with you. One, don't forget, I'll have my keys and a prediction to the game. Usually comes out either Friday night, Saturday morning. Um, so that'll that'll be up. And then after the game, I'll be back wrapping up the Commander Seahawks game. And so that's that's that. So a couple of things from, from being out there on Wednesday. Uh, the injury report, Curtis Samuel was limited. He has that toe injury. Kendall Fuller and John Allen did not practice. Veteran days off. Jahan Dotson did not practice personal reasons he's expected back on thursday john bates was there and i say that because his wife had their baby on a little girl on monday everybody's doing well and he's i think he's looking forward he said he hasn't he had he told me today he hadn't slept at home since friday so congrats to them he seemed to be in a very good mood obviously very happy so that's a good thing also so we talked to sam Hall and ron revere today at the podium one of the things that that Howell talked about, and I thought this was interesting because he was asked about the performance of the offensive line. And he talked about, you know, line doing better. He's getting the ball out faster. The enemy calling the plays well. And he said he thinks they're now finding their identity as an offense. And I know a lot of people are waiting for them, run the ball more. Not going to happen. They can run the ball better. And I think they could run it a little bit more. And you, I think, you, but I think being more effective running the ball is kind of what I've always pushed for lately because this is what the enemy does. And so, you know, that, so if you run the ball better, it sets everything else up. But I would also point out for as pass happy as they were last week, they held the ball for 37 minutes. So one of the things, and I asked Ron Revere about this early in the year, because every time we'd see a game games like this in the past, he would say, need to go back to what we do, what, you know, we need to go back to this, to running the ball, whatever. And the next week, it was always a message to Scott Turner the next week, they'd run the ball more. And I asked him, like, earlier this year, like, you're not saying that now. Why is that? And he likes what the enemy's doing as far as where the offense is taken. The other part of it is, you know, because he even said, because he coached with Andy Reid in Philadelphia, he knows how Reid approaches it, and the enemy is an absolute disciple of that offense. I think the other part of that is, if you remember, one of the big phrases he would talk about during the preseason was, or early in the, in the summertime after they hired the enemy, was being comfortable with the uncomfortable. This is uncomfortable, I think, for Rivera to to be part of that kind of offense. But he's trying; he's getting a comfort level, I believe, with it. And it's a spe- listen. If it starts to work, and the last couple of games they really moved the ball well, then you you know, it's easier to become comfortable with that. So I think that's, it's all part of that philosophy and letting, okay, you went out, you rolled the dice. I shouldn't say rolled the dice. You went out and you hired the enemy and you, you gave him the assistant head coach title. You put a lot on, you've given him, the enemy's had more power than any, any assistant coach that I've covered with the, I'd say maybe, maybe Marvin Lewis with Steve Spurrier, but I think that was because Spurrier didn't know what he was doing. So Lewis had to take control. This was given to the enemy. They are doing so many things that are the enemy related or suggested or his ideas that this is another one of them. So I think if you're going to do that, you're going to play it out and you're going to sink or swim with that. And that's so and offensively, 
they're starting to swim a little bit better the last few weeks defensively man they've got a ways to go and and that's a, that's my biggest concern for them moving forward is can that group shore up those details that they consistently have been missing or 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 performing poorly this season and so i think you'd have to say this offense is now going to have to carry this team down the stretch you need the defense to get to at least a, a you know, improve, just improve. If you can do that, then maybe the offense can improve enough where you can threaten and, and contend for the playoffs. But if they don't get there, you're going to lose in Seattle. And then you're going to come back, you beat the Giants, you're going to lose in Dallas, and you're going to kind of slog your way to seven wins. It's not what this team should be doing. So that would be a definite underachievement. And, in, and that wouldn't be good for anybody. So anyways, you know, um, but, but as far as the offense goes, starting to put things together, I think this would be another good test for them. I don't think Seattle has this great defense, but it's certainly going to be a tough place to play. And I think that's a that's it's a challenge. So, but if they want to get to the play, if they want to start talking playoffs, you got to win a game like this realistically first, because otherwise you're hanging around, but you're really not a, a big threat. But then you look at the NFC and who is? So, you know, there's going to be a spot open for somebody. Also, I we I talked about the sacks on the on the um film review session yesterday. And I think on the first sack, one of the things I just kind of wanted to update something that I'd said, and I didn't think the first one was really on Sam Howell. However, this is how it should have played out. If when they go back and look at it, this is the teaching point for this group. First of all, the Patriots corner who blitz was outside, it was a tight end. And they said in that in that situation they knew that that corner was going to blitz. So you want to alter your protection. That's one thing. Get Maybe because it was they were not sliding that way, so slide the protection that way to pick that up because you knew that because that's what they were taught. And then the other part is Gibson is crossing Howell's face to go out on his route, and he squeezes, he goes between Leno and the guard. Leno's engaged outside. They would tell Gibson next time, go outside the tackle because then it forces the defensive end to start to stay inside and it gives Leno a better chance to win on that pass set. And then, then for how it's, it's more either, you know, get rid of the ball or um, but you can't move back and drift left knowing the situation. So sometimes that's where, you know, you, you've either got to step up or, or just get rid of it because you know, but it seemed like that surprised them. But I think, like I said, in hindsight, this is how they wish they had handled it. And so they all could have handled it a little bit better. It was how it was put in a tough spot. But when you're put in a tough spot, how can you then overcome it? That's the point for him. Not that it was necessarily his fault, but the protection starts with the protection slide that way. Gibson going outside, Howell handling it and not drifting back, you know, kind of moving back and drifting a little bit to the left to get out. But that knowing that that end has a good angle off the tackle so and that's also something that's what i heard out there and also you listen to logan, logan paulson on the take command podcast he talked about that as well and that was that was his take and so when that's what i when i asked some people today that's you know that was part of what that's certainly part of what they said and then the other parts other parts that i learned too so anyways wanted to update you on that because i kind of like to if i say one thing and i find out something that's a little bit different or a little bit more to it i like to give that to you just so you get as much information as possible, et cetera. So anyway, that's it from, oh, you, oh, last thing I want to talk about. And so just from a practice standpoint, on Wednesdays now, they're really kind of starting to taper down. And you're, it's more of a, it's, it's certainly not a walkthrough, but you're not going out there in helmets. There's, you're just basically, you're in your shirts and shorts, right? Or whatever it is in November, and to, you know, it's going to be warm on Thursday. But anyway, so that's what they're in. It's not a strenuous practice. It's as much a mental practice for them. And I think a lot of it has to do with, there's a couple of things. One, they work longer and harder than they have in a long time. So I think, and there's some guys who I know have not liked that Tuesday, having that Tuesday as a day where they have to go out there and work. They've always preferred Monday because you're going in, you know, to you're going in on Monday. Anyway, you get your treatment, you get the meetings, you do all that. And then Tuesday's your day off. So you can spend it, you know, doing charity stuff, doing whatever. And even a lot of guys who they had the Tuesday off this week, well, a lot of guys go in and either get treatment or go in and watch film for a little bit, but they're not there all day. So, but the thing is like, and when you don't have a buy until, until early, no, early December, 
you need to start finding ways to keep their bodies fresh. And the whole goal is to be playing well down the stretch. Will this help them? We'll see. Will they stay fresh? We'll see. But there are times where I, I, I know that some guys were, I think, ready for something um, like this. Where And this is the first time, this week was the first time they had their victory, I guess, victory Tuesday. It used to be victory Monday where they get Monday off. Now they got Tuesday off. It's the first one they've had. This is really this is late in the season for those kind of victory Monday slash Tuesday rewards that that pretty much every team gets at some point. These guys haven't had one. Um, now the more games you win, the more likely you get them. But that's a, aside from that. This is still a little bit late in the year for their first one to have that. And I think it comes at a good time when you you know you're gonna, you're going to be going out to the West Coast. I think it's good to get your bodies fresh. And again, with that having a late buy, I think you have to look for ways to help with that. And they do track these players with their GPS numbers. So they can tell when they're, when they need a break and when they don't just based on how they're tracking the GPS anyways. All right. That's enough for me. Let's get to my conversation with former NFL coach and long, a long former longtime NFL coach and someone who still watches all these games a lot and knows how to analyze Marty Morningway. So what I wanted to ask you about is, you know, I know you had written something in the off season about Eric bien needing to tailor around Sam Howell. And I remember at that time thinking, you know, that you obviously had some insight into how you might be able to use this guy, but I'm curious if you, how much you've been able to watch him this season and any thoughts you may have on him. Well, I've watched him this season. I really like how Eric bien operates as well. I think, I think playing quarterback for a guy like Eric can, can take you to a little bit, better heights and higher heights uh, uh, just because of his philosophy. And this is what I've seen from Sam Howell with the Washington Commanders. Is he, for the coaches, for his teammates, and for the fans, he's given them, John, some hope. Yeah, He's given them a little confidence. Why? Because he makes typically – Pretty good decisions for for a man that has started what maybe just a little bit more than single digits yeah, 10 in the games. National Football League, right? Yeah. Well, he makes pretty good decisions. He's got pretty good accuracy. He understands timing for the most part, right? Because right. he's gaining experience. And then he's got some gut instincts that can take you far as well. So that's what I've seen with Sam Hell. Now, this is going to be fascinating, John, down the stretch for the commanders because it looks to me like new ownership. They're in a little bit of the twilight zone. Right. A lot of unknowns. Ron Rivera, a heck of a coach. Is he going to be there? Right. Eric Bianami, who looks like he works really well with Sam Howell. Is he going to be there? And then, and then. You've got some of the players saying, oh, am I going to be here, right? right? It, it, it filters down just a little bit. So it's going to be fascinating to see. Can the Washington Commanders make a run, which I think is possible? And then is Sam Howell going to be the man in charge at the quarterback position for the future of the Washington Commanders? It's going to be fascinating. Oh, I agree. And I want to get to that in a minute, but I want to stick to what he's doing right now. And so, you know, when you look at him, what are, is there, you know, are there moments or anything that sticks out to you? Or is there an attribute of his game that you say he's further ahead here than where a lot of young guys are? Okay. Every quarterback is different, John, right. right? Everyone is different. Even if they're in the same style or same mold, they have different strengths. They have different weaknesses. They also become a heck of a quarterback at a different rate, right? right. I remember Brett Favre. Uh, it it was probably, oh, year three, year four, somewhere in there in the NFL. Remember, he had his rookie yeah. season in Atlanta. And then when he hit it, bam, did he ever right. hit it. But before that, the Green Bay Packers were something like eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight. And then he becomes the three-time back-to-back-to-back MVP of the league. So uh, I can see Sam Howell gaining experience. They've got to figure out as a quarterback, unless you're on just a fantastic team with an excellent defense, a la Ben Roethlisberger, right? right? 
or Joe Flacco. It's very difficult to play quarterback at that high level, let's say a top eight or top 10 in the NFL. Very difficult to do on a mediocre team or certainly a team that's struggling like some of these other fellows are on. So I see Sam Howell right there. He's gaining experience. Uh, he's figuring out what he can get away with and what he can't. He's taken too many sacks. You could say the commanders have given up too many sacks. But two-thirds of all sacks in the National Football League, to me, are typically it's two-thirds, are quarterback-related. Meaning, right. uh, on two-thirds of those uh, sacks, the quarterback could have done something uh, uh, to, to uh, alleviate a sack. So that's where Sam Howell's at. But I do think he's got good instincts. He typically, now it's got to be more consistent. Right. He uh, with his decision making, his accuracy, and his timing. So he's right there. Is he going to be the man in charge for the future of the commanders at the quarterback spot? So, and like you said, you've been around young quarterbacks. Brett Favre, you were with Geno Smith. You were with other young quarterbacks. What what things do you look for, and how long does it usually take to tell where this guy is headed, or what level of quarterback he can play in the NFL? Yeah, you just mentioned a couple. I had Garcia as a rookie, right. Jalen Hurts, Nick Foles, uh, Gino Lamar. I mean, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and and okay, look, within two or three days, you think you know, right? You think you know why? Because there's there's three things that go on, right? The wow factor, right? Michael Vick has wow factor. Lamar, right. other positions, uh, Deshaun Jackson. Within two or three days, there's going to be several like whoa and wows, right? That's one way. The other way is that high level of play, the high level of play on a really consistent basis. So that takes that takes time. Right. We talked about far, right? That sometimes that takes time uh, to 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 show that. And then the toughness part, every great quarterback that I've ever coached is tougher than nails, both physically, but especially mentally. So that takes time as well. So those two of those three things takes a little time to figure out. But within the first three days, John, you know that the, whether or not this young man has some special skills or not. Sure. And I think with his toughness, he's shown like, and when you talk about like mental toughness, so what I've seen from him is, you know, responds well to negative situations or plays or bad games or bad week or whatever, you know, and he's, he's not afraid physically, that's mentally tough. Physically, he's not afraid to turn it up on third and 10 if he needs two more yards. So what is it that you, when you talk about the mental toughness, what is it that you look for? And maybe is there anything that you've seen from how watching him that, that shows that? Well, Sam Howell now, uh, from everything I can gather, th 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 this guy is a humble guy mm -hmm. he, he, uh, uh, in public, right? He's very confident in private. Uh, and there, you hit the nail on the head in one aspect of the mental toughness that I'm talking about, right? You, 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 you always wonder what a young man is going to do when things go bad, which they likely will. Oh, yeah a talented young player on a uh, maybe average, maybe a little bit better than average team, right? All right. And, but then on the other end, which is likely as well, when things go really well, hmm. because he's a talented young man on a decent team, right? There's going to be segments of that, of that first few years where things go really well. How is he going to handle that as well? And can he keep his consistency? There's been dozens and dozens, probably hundreds of quarterbacks through the NFL that have strung together two, three, four, five games, but they just can't keep it together. You know, as a quarterback, John, uh, you're evaluated when you're all said and done on how many wins uh, you established, how many championships you won, how many times you got your team into the end zone, back to back to back over – uh, many, many years. That's how you're evaluated as a quarterback. So there's only a select few, John, 
that can lead their team. That's another thing, the leadership. Once Sam Howe becomes really comfortable with Eric Bieniemy's system, he's figured out what he can get away with and what he can't. Now, here comes his leadership abilities. And everybody's different, right, on how they lead. They're from all different parts of the country. They grew up different ways. They speak differently. Their sense of humor is different. They think about the game differently. So uh, then, then you'll see Sam Howe's leadership ability. But I think he's done an excellent job of when things go really well to stay even keel, mm -hmm. right? What's next? That's a, what's the next mission? That that should be the, the thought process. And when things go bad, which they have. He's had he, he's laid a couple eggs, right? When mm -hmm. things go bad, what's the next mission? What did I learn? And let's put that to use and let's go forward. It looks like he's really mentally tough that way, John. Yes, I, I and I would agree with that. And you said you brought up earlier about Eric Bienemy's system for him, and you thought it was a good that why why is that what is it is it because he likes to throw the ball a lot and it gets to put him in situations or what is it that you why why do you feel that way i've been around eric just a little bit enough to know his philosophy right all right and then eric <clears throat> excuse me eric's a tough dude right yeah. he puts it on the table he, he's not going to pull any punches right the expectations are very very high and eric will not bend on those expectations, no matter what just happened in the past, those expectations are high. Players thrive in a well-thought-out, well-organized, disciplined system that has high expectations. Players thrive in that environment, and I know Eric is trying and has established just a little bit of that process. And then when you look at... Um with the sacks, you brought the sacks and he's obviously the last two weeks has been better with that. Yeah. Previously, there were a lot. And so in your experience, you've had guys that have been sacked a lot. You've had guys that haven't, you've had guys that improved throughout that. What's the key for when you, cause obviously, you know, you can build a stronger wall around them. Okay. But for Sam, for the quarterback, what's the key to help improve in that area? He experience uh, for his style. Because he moves and grooves pretty well. He even has a little running ability. You mentioned that mm -hmm. uh, on this on this segment. So <clears throat> experience goes a long way. Now, I will tell you, some guys at, at the skill position and certainly the quarterback position, they just take care of the ball a little bit better than others. They can get a little bit better at it, but it's ingrained in them. It looks like he takes care of the ball reasonably well, and he'll get better and better at that. Sacks are the same way. Some quarterbacks, they just get sacked more than others. Oh, my gosh. And they'll get better at it, but it's still in them. Right. Sam Howell, I don't think, is in that mold of he just takes more sacks than others. <coughs> Excuse me. So he'll learn when to throw the football away, what he can get, get away with when he's moving and grooving and, and actually scrambling and moving within the pocket, all those things. And I know Eric, the enemy, has drills for the quarterbacks within their movement. So when a quarterback moves, he still has to retain a great amount of discipline. And there's drills for that. There's emphasis. There's discussions. You have to drill it on the field. You have to take a couple plays from seven on seven and team if you've got a really mobile quarterback and practice the uh, that those movement type of drills within the team. You do it individually, you do it as a unit, but then you must take a couple plays every now and then to drill those things in practice with the whole football team. And, you know, it's funny because like one of the things they talk about is like, you know, sometimes he wants to make that big play. His eyes stay downfield, right? The, sack, the, the pressure doesn't get to him, but he's trying to make that big play. And so sometimes you hold the ball a little bit longer. How do you... Do you want, do you try to coach that out of somebody or do you try to build a stronger wall to give them that extra time to hit that big play? How do you balance that? Yeah, it depends on the play and on the protection, right? So there are some protections uh, that I, I would like to see the quarterback keep his depth and he can he can pump the ball a couple of times. You, you know, let's say seven-man protection with double chips, all those things, right? But there are others, five-man protection, six-man protection, that that timing, Right. It's 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 almost like uh, uh, 
an artist painting a picture. I mean, you know, some of those, it, when a quarterback figures out what he can get away with and what he can't, and he utilizes that experience in games, it looks like an artist painting a picture. I mean, so Sam is right there uh, with his uh, sort of uh, matriculation in Eric Bieniemy's thought process, his philosophy. And it sometimes, sometimes it's a seamless transition into the NFL. Typically, like we talked about, you have to be on a really good team uh, for it to look like that. Other times, it takes a little time to gain that experience and put it to use. Just a couple more things here, and I appreciate your time. So when you're looking at him, and when you've been around young quarterbacks who start off a certain way, what's the key to taking that next step? When you've got a rookie that's really talented, which I've been fortunate to have uh, really more than a handful, yeah. right? And you're forced or you choose to play them. Now, with my experience with a rookie, it's more mid-season, right? Uh, and on, that young man may be ready as long as you play directly to that young man's strengths. Forget about what he can't do. Focus on all of those things, and you wouldn't have drafted him. He wouldn't be on your team if he can't do some things really, really well at a high level. So play directly to his strengths, and then you try to stay one step ahead of your opponent schematically. Because if you play two games in a row directly to his strengths and that's it, that third game, that maybe fourth game, you're going to get slapped in your eyes. You're going to get slapped around like a little kid. You know, so you've got to schematically stay one step ahead. And then all of the things that he must improve upon, you start that immediately in the off season throughout the, the OTAs into the next training camp. And, and, and then he may have a few more strengths in that second year. That's where Sam is just about right there. Right. And then in the third and fourth year, uh, that young talented quarterback should be playing very close to his height, to his cap. And, and for people listening, you check out Marty and the others work on th the 33rd team, really good insight into the game, into plays, into store, into whatever storylines are out there, but into the game itself. So bat with Sam, you know, we don't know what's going to happen here in the future. We don't know if Ron Rivera and his staff will be retained as someone from the outside. Have you seen enough from him where you'd say, regardless of who's here next year, this kid should be the quarterback. I really think that that's the case here. Right, you're oh, you're not looking for just a good quarterback. You're looking for a great quarterback, a guy that can take you to the promised land several times throughout the next, let's say, decade. That's the type of guy you're looking for. They should know, or at least they think they should right. know. On Sam Howell, I'm talking the administration, the personnel man, right. the coaches. Oh, they should at least they think they should know to the point where. We're going to give this young man every opportunity to become a great quarterback for the Washington Commanders. And as he gains experience, we're going to build this team around him. So he's able, he's got enough juice, he's got enough talent around him to be able to take us to the, to the Super Bowls, uh, plural, I said, right? Right. Uh, so that's the mentality that you have to have when you're evaluating a young quarterback like Sam Howell, my opinion is that they're already there. That's what I, that's what I think from, from afar just a little bit, but Sam Howell may very well be the future of the Washington commanders, no matter what happens. Now, look at, I'm biased. I think Ron Rivera is a heck of a head coach. I think Eric Bien is a heck of a coordinator. So I would like to see that stay intact and see what they can do in the next two or three years with this young quarterback named Sam Howell. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously, be as you know, it'd be good for him to stay in the same system for a That's couple right. years in a row. Absolutely. Um, Geno Smith, they played Geno Smith this weekend. You coach Geno, you know, I'm sure you've kept up with him. What do you think about what he's doing this year? I coached Geno Smith yeah. as a rookie at the New York Jets, where we went eight and eight with a rookie quarterback that we were forced to play from game one. He started all 16 games. Back then it was a 16-game schedule. Right. 
And he would, this was, this was Gino as a rookie. He would have one really good game. And then he would have a poor game. The next game would be really good. Then a poor game, then a good game. Then a poor, and then at mid season, he had a little dip. He didn't play very well for a few games. And then at the end of the season, he came out of it and we won three of four with Geno Smith as a starter, all 16 games, three of the last four, knocked the Miami Dolphins out of the playoffs, which was really rewarding. Is all they had to do was beat us at home. We go down there and beat them up like a borrowed mule, right? That's a rewarding type of feeling coming back on the plane. Then Geno went through a mess. Right. Yeah, yeah. Injuries, uh, locker room incidents, uh, you know, all those things. Uh, he wasn't quite mature enough, uh, like Sam Howell uh, may very well be, right? Mentally strong. Okay, now he's learned that. And then a decade later last year, he gets his opportunity in Seattle. And I'm very proud of Geno Smith. This is going to be a heck of a game because the Washington Commanders are go flying into Seattle, the 12th man, all that. It's a big home field advantage, right? And they're looking, I'm talking about the commanders, to make a run, make a statement, right? And then the Seattle Seahawks are in sort of the same type of mentality where they're looking forward to the playoffs, but they got to put some wins back to back to back down the stretch here. And then the very, very last thing with Sam, you brought this up earlier about being surrounded by a good team. You've seen what this defense has done. Do you worry that there's too much on Sam to try and carry this team at a young age? Do they have enough there to, to help him out? Hey, look, uh, almost every quarterback, great quarterback, I'm talking Hall of Famer, has sort of been to hell and back, right? Yes, and yes. and, and if, 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 if you go, you got to climb out, right? And you're scarred up, but they heal. And then you learn, and then the team gets better as you're gaining experience, right? That's where the Washington Commanders and Sam Howell are. He, he hasn't dropped too many, uh, you, you, you know, eggs right in the middle no. of 50. He hasn't done that yet. But let's, let's anticipate there's going to be a game or two where that does occur, right? And so, so you can, you know, the past is important to learn from, right? The future is important to plan for. So plan for that just a little bit. I remember with all those rookie quarterbacks that we uh, most of the time were forced to play, right? Uh, and sometimes it was a little too early. Uh, talented dudes, right? I wanted to be there when they bleeped up the first time, right? And most of the time, you know what happened? His teammates beat me to the punch, mm. right? And and they, hey, we got your back. You know, some of the defensive players go by, hey, we got your back. Well, we're gonna we're gonna stop them right here. All those things, right? So uh, my last my last thought is what I said earlier with Sam Howell. He's given hope to the Washington Commanders. It's been so long since yeah. they've had a mm -hmm. long term great quarterback. He's given hope. He's given inspiration. Right. He's given confidence to his coaches and teammates, and I think most of the fans. I would definitely agree with that. I think these guys are pretty fired up for the exact same reason you said. So, listen, Marty, I appreciate you coming on. Do you want to tell people where they can? I mentioned the 33rd team. Do you want to tell everybody else where else they can, can see your stuff? Uh, hey, I'm not real techie, right? But, <laughs> but I try to keep it to a minimum. I do. I do a radio show, ESPN, out of Missoula, Montana, Mondays. Uh, five o'clock mountain standard time. I, I try to keep the radio stuff to a, uh, like a couple a week. I do the Montana Grizzlies color All on right. TV. I do seven of their conference games. I've had a blast doing that. And, and I only do seven of the conference games. So it allows me, it allows me to play a little golf, right? There it allows go. me to get my, I've got two sons that are coaching. One in Ivy League at Columbia. We were out there for the homecoming. One at North Dakota State in Fargo, North Dakota. What a great staff that is, by the way. So we got to go out there. I like to see their teams play at least once a year and maybe more. And then I've had a blast doing the color commentary on the television for Scripps Sports. Uh, and so you can catch that on ESPN Plus, or you got to be in Montana, or you got to be in the, the region where – 
uh, they're playing, like uh, they're playing uh, Portland State, uh, so it'll be shown all over Portland. That's awesome. And I, and I think my family and I are going out to that region this summer, so I'm looking forward to that. So, hey, Marty. What, are you I, going out to what region? We're going out to the Wyoming, Montana area. So You get you 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 must stop by here. All right. And if you, if, if you want to spend a night or two or a home base from here, we've had several people do that. We're on the west side of the Rockies. All right. right. So, so uh, the east side, you've got Yellowstone and all that. That's that's like maybe three or four days. And then on the west side, you've got a whole different type of uh, situation. Uh, uh, you've got Glacier and uh, all, all of that. that. So, yeah. So anytime you want to come up and visit, just holler. All right, Our Marty. I, wide open. I appreciate that, man. I look forward to that. Thanks for coming on and for the insight. All right, John. Go Grizz. There you go. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Marty for joining me. And thank you, as always, for tuning in. I'll be back on Friday slash Saturday with my keys and a prediction for the Commander's Seahawks game. I'll talk to you next time.